However, today, it is hard to find social conservatives and libertarians who see themselves as fighting for these foundational principles. And that is why these lectures and discussions are not just important, but necessary. Dr. Donald J. Devine explains that libertarians and social conservatives are true natural allies. He writes, they can cohere because they both basically hold a positive enough view of human nature to not require a strong central government to control a nasty human nature. The economic conservatives, libertarians, view nature as actually benign, encouraging individualism, experimentation, and entrepreneurship, believing that a, quote, hidden hand will make everything turn out right. The social conservatives are not so optimistic, but they do think nature can at least be tolerant for human social life if institutions like the family, church, and community are vibrant. Both limit government in favor of private institutions and differ from liberals or statists who view nature as ephemeral and fatalists who view it as capricious. Both of which views require the strong hand of government to control human nature." End quote. Neither the social conservatives nor the libertarians can succeed in achieving their goals by themselves. And if both groups do not try to work together with their natural allies, the other guys who have their own goals will use the national government to achieve them. Devine later writes, the price of a successful conservatism must be a gracious acceptance of the Reaganite live and let live formula of libertarian means for traditionalist ends. If the modern scourge of brutal egalitarianism, debilitating fatalism, and bureaucratized welfare statism are to be transcended, traditionalist and libertarian conservatives must work together in bold harmony. The heart of modern conservatism and the answer to the question of what conservatism is can be found in the fusionism described by Meyer, which appealed to the founding era. M. M. Stanton Evans, who worked closely with Meyer, explained the founders' fusionism in this way. Quote, neither the authoritarian ideas of Hamilton nor the libertarian ideas of Jefferson dominated the Constitutional Convention. It was rather the fusionist ideas of Madison, end quote. Heritage Foundation scholar Dr. Matthew Spaulding writes, the path we must follow requires a reborn conservatism grounded in the abiding principles of the American liberty as expressed in the Declaration of Independence and the United States Constitution. A constitutional conservatism unites all conservatives through the natural fusion provided by American principles. It reminds economic conservatives that morality is essential to limited government. Cultural conservatives that unlimited government is a threat to self-government. And national security conservatives that energetic but responsible government is the key to America's safety at home and prominence in the world. These principles can be the source of a new fusionism and a new American conservatism if we understand them less as a fusion of opposites and more as inferences from the same foundational truth. The fusion of conservative ideas occurs at the level of principle, where foundational agreement among a broad swath of American people can be found. The reason fusionists synthesize freedom and tradition is not for political purposes, but rather it is because they believe both freedom and tradition are true and essential. A political party without a committed philosophical movement at its core will be hard pressed to stay true to its principles. Ronald Reagan, Frank Meyer, Bill Buckley, and most of the founders of the modern conservative movement did not see the fusion as merely tactical or political. As Reagan puts it, the libertarian means and traditionalist ends complement each other and fusionism represents a consistent philosophy of government. 
One cannot look at the major philosophers of traditional virtue and liberty without finding that the best in each school believed both were necessary. Economic conservative F.A. Hayek taught that both are essential, saying that freedom and markets cannot exist without a traditional, even religious, social order to sustain them. Noted social conservative Russell Kirk believed the state is often the greatest threat to traditional values and institutions. It is important to note, as Devine has said, that the name fusionism is not the most crucial point here. Hayek, nor Kirk, nor Meyer called themselves fusionists, but they all believed in a synthesis between tradition and freedom. Devine writes, indeed, as Meyer taught, Western civilization itself was and is a harmony of both. Not a simple, uniform tune, but a harmonic masterpiece. Not simple libertarianism, nor unequivocal traditionalism, but both. As Reagan said, this was part of the deeper current of Western learning and culture that created Europe and its offspring and imitators around the world, very much including the United States. So as we conclude this lecture on fusionism, let, rem let me remind you once again of those associated with William F. Buckley. Frank Meyer, William Rusher, M. Stanton Evans, Dr. Donald J. Devine. They brought this foundation of fusionism to life with a statement known as the Sharon Statement. And I encourage you to find a copy of this and read it for yourselves. In recent years, it was updated to the Mount Vernon Statement. Both are worthy of your time and consideration. And then I want to bring to your attention some of those whose work and writings have led in this fusionist tradition. Barry Goldwater with Conscience of a Conservative. Ronald Reagan. Midge Dechter. Phyllis Schlafly. Senator Jesse Helms. Richard Vigory. Ed Fulner. Mark Levin. Father Robert Sirico and Jay Richards and James Robison. You may not know each and every one of these leaders, but they stand on the shoulders of those I discussed earlier. If you and I are to succeed in carrying forward this fusionist vision for our country, it is on their shoulders too that we shall also stand. Thank you so much for your time and attention.